Christmas and welcome to Ask the Musician. I'm Shelley Irwin. Hopefully Santa was good to you this year. Keeping with the holiday spirit, tonight in studio we have a special program. We have Glenn Boldheis Jr. who will be singing us uh, well, answers with that Christmas episode. There we go. Answers to the, the questions that I'm going to ask All you. Right. Hi, cool. how are you Glenn? Excellent. Excellent. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas yeah, to you. Yeah. There we are. Guitar in hand. When did you pick up your first? I think my first guitar was probably eighth grade. It was a Sears Silvertone, probably a $15 guitar my parents brought in the house. I still own it. And uh, yeah, about seventh, eighth grade. Yeah. yeah. What, um, what made you stick with it? Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting. I think when I was eight years old, 1964, the Beatles were on Ed Sullivan. And that certainly was a crystallizing moment to see those four guys and the three of them playing. I go, oh, that's pretty cool. So then I, my mom played a ukulele and I played that and then by the time I was in seventh, eighth grade, I started playing guitar. So yeah. it seemed cool. Did you take a lesson or two? Yeah, I took some community lessons at a park. You sit in a room with 30 people and the guy says, okay, now we're all going to play, you know, Lodi or Proud Mary and everyone have a piece of paper in front of them and we all learn those chords. So yeah, that was pretty much the training, just a couple of lessons like that. Most of it was listening to records and yeah. kind of digging, up, digging it out. Yep. Yeah. Do you have a style that you know? Well, I think what I, one thing I do that's different than maybe most, mm -hmm. most folks sort of strum, you know. But I'm more of a, I do like a little finger picking. So that kind of, you know, James Taylor mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. really personified that. And that was, he was big in 69 when I was about eighth grade, so yeah. 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 Is Christmas uh, singing a tradition for your family? Am I keeping you away from Very, your family? No, it's all <laughs> cool. It's all cool. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I think, I know, I was raised uh, you know, going to church, so I'm sure these songs, the songs I'm going to play for you today, were songs that were sung to me before I even was aware of what music was. So, yeah, always had Christmas and Christmas music in the house mm -hmm. every year, sure. Great. Yeah. Well, I'm going to keep, keep asking you questions, but we are here to, to celebrate some Christmas music. Sure. So uh, sure. let's hear from you, Glenn. All right. Well, let's start with uh, kind of a What Child Is This song. And sort of a, it picks up a little on Parsi Sage, Will Marry in Time, a little bit of that, a little bit of We Three Kings, and kind of does a little funky thing. So we'll see how it goes. All right.
All round right. of applause. There you are. Thanks, thank you thanks. for that. Practice, practice, practice. Is that what will get you yeah, on the stage I at think Carnegie Hall? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think a lot of days after school spent in your bedroom, mm -hmm. playing in your room, you know. And, uh, yeah, mostly high school years and college, I think I did the most playing. Mm -hmm. It was probably just, it was a way to just sit in your room and, and work up musical ideas and work through some of the angst, you know, teen angst, whatever it is. So. Yeah, yeah. This is an acoustic guitar versus an electric? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's acoustic. This is a Taylor, very nice Taylor. Mm -hmm. I got it at, at Rainbow Music here in Grand mm -hmm. Rapids. There you go. Very nice guitar made in uh, El Cajon, California. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, you also have a band that you hang out with? I sometimes uh -huh. play with a group of guys. Yeah. I've been with the guys for, gee, since the early, since the mid-70s, so 35 years. Uh, band's called the Tone Devs, mm -hmm. and we get together for special occasions and do concerts, but... Uh, yeah. yeah. Most of what I do is, is at church or, or solo things like this. How much yeah. does the quality of a guitar matter? Is, uh, can you buy good sound? Yeah, well, I think um, you can start off for 100 150 bucks. You can get in the door with some, a decent guitar. I mean, the guitar I first had in eighth grade was $25. And it was a fine. Mm -hmm. I still have it. I still own it today. It's, a, it's fine. But as you get older and you get a little more money in the bank, you say, well, let me, you know, let me try to get something more refined, so you go to the music, the music store, the guitar mm -hmm. store, and you, you, you try ten of them, and you mm -hmm. say, okay, well, this one I really like, but it costs this much, and so it's a, and it's totally a personal uh, preference kind of thing. You know, you can pay mm -hmm. 10,000 bucks for a guitar, you can spend 5,000 bucks, you can spend a thousand dollars, and down to 500, there's, there's a range. So. Yeah. And what is this uh, device that you have on? Uh, this guy here? Yeah. yeah. It's called a Capo, C-A-P-O. Mm -hmm. What that does, um, for example, to give the best example, a song like Here mm -hmm. Comes the Sun by the Beatles, mm -hmm. they capo on fret, on fret uh, 7 and they get this sound. Mm -hmm. If you didn't have the capo, you went down here. There's a difference, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that song's in the key of A. Mm -hmm. But to get the Beatles sound, you need a capo on fret 7. Hang on. Mm -hmm. So James Taylor used a lot of this. Or Keith Richards of the Rolling Stones, mm -hmm. he uses the, uh, this. A lot of electric guitars swear that they don't use them, but, but you know, it's, it, it just it's helps you to change, uh, change keys and, yeah. You're writing music? Oh, yeah, I always am writing songs, uh -huh. yeah. How does that work? Well, um, for me, it works to have an event to play for. Um, if I've got a concert coming up and I'm going to play for a certain group of people in a certain setting, and then I'll, then I'll write for that. I don't often just wake up and say, oh, today I'm going to write a song. But it, if I'm working on a new album, for example, like my last album in 2012, yeah, I, uh, you know, you get, wake, wake up every morning and say, okay, what ideas are there? And some people, mm -hmm. if you're in, like in Nashville, you spend eight hours a day and you try and write at least a song a day and just bang them out. Now, I've never done that. Mm -hmm. But some people say that that's their trade. They say, I'm going to bang out a song a day. Should all kids learn to play a musical instrument? Yeah, well, I, I would say yes, but, but obviously different kids have different um, kind of things they gravitate toward. Um, I guess know. I should say, should adults try it out, too, yeah, if they yeah, miss that yeah, opportunity? Well, and it's interesting, because I know people who are music lovers. I know mm -hmm. one guy, he's about my age, he loves to go to a concert, has a gigantic music collection, mm -hmm. but he doesn't play an instrument. And um, that's not to say you can't. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it's a different way to appreciate music. For me, for example, when I was a kid listening to, let's say, The Beatles, Do I Want to Hold Your Hand, I enjoyed it as a musical event or something on the radio, but until I actually got a little older and said, oh, how do you actually play that? What chords mm -hmm. are those? Well, that's E and you B minor. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, it's in G. And, and then you understand the mechanics of what, what, mm -hmm. what, it, what it is. And that kind of is a whole, it's like a puzzle. But that, that way, when you hear a song, you say, okay, how do they achieve that sound? And then you start listening to it closer and saying, okay, what key is that in? What chords are they playing? So, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Let's play another song. Another one? Okay, yep. this is one. Uh, another kind of instrumental kind of singing song. Actually, this was originally written uh, for a guitar. I think Franz Gruber, mm -hmm. you know. Like mm -hmm. The story is they had, it was Christmas Eve. The organ wasn't working in Germany. So he pulled the guitar out and mm -hmm. wrote this one. So.
silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild, sleep in heaven. Theme, you're right on it, Ben yeah, Voltais. Yeah. Um, storing your guitar, does this need to stay away from hot, well, real hot, real cold? It's during? interesting you mention that because yeah. living in Michigan, mm -hmm. guitars do go through a lot more uh, temperature and humidity yeah. differences. And this car, this guitar actually has a slight crack here, mm -hmm. which you can't maybe see on television, but slight crack. But and I sent it back to the to the factory, mm -hmm. and they got it all beautiful. And and six months later, it cracked. Cracked again. again. But it doesn't affect the sound at all. And I've had it fixed by local guys, and it's great. But they but what you're supposed to do, which mm -hmm. we don't always do, is keep a little kind of a it's not like a little tube with a sponge, and it's supposed to keep that in your guitar case, and and that's supposed to make keep it from. And the pianos have the same situation. Mm -hmm. Pianos in churches, because the air conditioning goes on once a week, and mm -hmm. then six days it's not. They're all over the map, too. And so, yeah, in Michigan, it's a little bit tougher to keep a guitar in great shape. But like a guy like James Taylor, he has got a vault full of guitars because he goes through them. He says guitars, mm -hmm. kind of unlike violins, you know, if you're touring hard with a guitar, it maybe lasts two years to really... So, he, you know, it's a guitar. I mean, this guitar I've had since 2000, mm -hmm. so, you know, it's... Yeah. It's pretty durable. <laughs> <laughs> it knows it's, it's, no, yeah. it's taken a beat. Oh, yeah, and that's uh, part of the character, too. I mean, yeah. it, it's just fun to have. I mean, I can I can see what different things were scraped. I remember when I bonked this against the wall one day yeah. or whatever. So. That sounds good. Yeah. Tell me, uh, how much does an audience matter when you're playing in front of us? Well, I will say this. You can practice all day, and I've done this with bands, where you rehearse and rehearse and rehearse, and then mm -hmm. when you finally get in front of a group of people, it's a different experience. Mm -hmm. It's a different, and, and generally, it's a, it's a very positive thing because on, on, normally you're playing in a room with just the four of you or five of you, and um, you know you kind of enjoy the process and you do enjoy rehearsal. But mm -hmm. when you have an audience there and you feel them react, that certainly heightens the whole enjoyment of it. Mm -hmm. So, um, let's talk a little bit about your voice. Yeah. How important mm -hmm. is it to keep your voice healthy, and how do you do that, Glenn? Well, I, I don't do a lot of screaming. Um, you know, one guy I really admire and have always loved is James Taylor. Now, he's, mm -hmm. he's 65, 60, mm -hmm. he's maybe 67 now. He's somewhere in that mid-60s. He still tours extensively, does 24, 25 mm -hmm. songs a show, and sounds pretty much as good as ever. Um, so it's not the amount of singing. I think it's the type of singing. If, you, if you're screaming a lot, if you're hitting up really screeching the high notes, that can do a number on your voice if you smoke a lot, if you know... Mm -hmm. Um, but if you live for a pretty healthy life, you get eight, eight hours of sleep a night. I think uh, if you don't over abuse your voice, I mean, mm -hmm. people on Broadway do eight shows a week, you know. Yeah. I don't yeah. know but it's an instrument of itself. Isn't yeah. It? yeah. yeah. Um, let's talk about making a CD. Mm -hmm. Can anybody make a CD? Yeah. yeah. Yes, you can. I mean, I started doing music in college. I went to Calvin. I grew up in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. but I went to Calvin. And my senior year, I did my first concert with, you know, in the Fine Arts Center. We had, you know, 500 kids, you mm -hmm. know, free, you know. And then I, 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 at that point, I was already writing a number of songs. So um, this is the 80s, so I made an, al an album about 1980. We, we, did, we recorded the entire concert, 30-some songs, mm -hmm. and then we went through and pared that down and then released it as an album. So uh, my first four recordings were all live recordings with an audience. Wow. 
Mm -hmm. All one take. I mean, there was no, mm -hmm. you know, you mm -hmm. didn't have a chance to come back and sweeten this. Um, I've since made three more albums that are all studio, mm -hmm. um, where you go in a room and you, you know, you spend time and months kind of getting it. Um, but yeah, and you can do it. I think, I think the thing is you can't necessarily go into it thinking, okay, I'm going to record this thing, I'm going to make all this money. It really, that really mm -hmm. can't be your motivation because, you know, I mean, you can spend a lot of money on recording something and then you get done with it and it's maybe a lovely thing, but then selling it, you know. Yeah. And, to, and now with the digital age, you know, people get songs off the, off the web or they don't really buy CDs mm -hmm. anymore. Yep. Uh, not so much. Times have changed. Yeah. More songs, please, Glenn. More songs, please? Mm -hmm. All right. I, I think this was from 1945, 1944. Mm -hmm. I know Sinatra did it. I'm not even sure if it's from a movie, but it's one we all know. Oh, the weather outside is frightful, but the fire is so delightful. Since we've no place to go, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. It doesn't show signs of stopping, but I've got some corn for popping. The lights are turned way down low. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. When we finally kiss goodnight, how I hate going out in the storm. But if you really hold me tight, all the way home I'll be warm. Oh, the fire is slowly dying. And my dear, we're still goodbye. But as long as you love me so, let it snow, 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 let it snow. Finally kiss goodnight How I hate going out in the storm But if you really hold me tight All the way home I'll be warm I'll be warm Oh, the fire is slowly dying And my dear, we're still goodbye But as long as you love me so Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow Let it snow let it snow, let it snow. But I but I'm da but I'm da. But I but I but I'm ba ba. But I ba 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 ba. Well. You're getting too comfortable, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I almost joined in with a little whistle or two. Um, how do you make it as a musician these days? If somebody really says, this is what I want to do, what's your solution? Well, let's see. That's a good question. You know, I, I, I've been lucky in that for the past 35 some years. I mean, I started off at Calvin, mm -hmm. did a show there as a, as a senior, came back each year, built an audience. By the time I was about 23, there, we'd just sell out, you know, a thousand seats in the Fine Arts Center. And that was kind of a cool mm -hmm. thing, made an album. And for a good number of years there, we had really good audiences. Um, a little less now, you know, but um, I, I, I just think the, the, your, your biggest thing is you just got to, got to enjoy what, what you're doing and not really think in terms of the money, you know. I mean, I'm making, I'm a musician at a church now, so I, I do that, and I do this kind of for, for part-time mm -hmm. stuff. But the joy of making music, I think, is the biggest thing. Now, my next-door neighbor growing up in L.A., he mm -hmm. sang with Michael Jackson and, and Stevie Wonder and was on this night show, and he's a... You know, he's a musician, a paid musician, but it's it's still a, 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 a hustle. I mean, he still has to work on the next gig. It's kind of like the circus, you know. You, you're on tour with James Taylor that lasts three or four months, and then you come back to town, mm -hmm. and like, okay, now what? You know, and so you get on the phone and start working those mm -hmm. connections again. You know? Do you recommend the open mic nights for those who are... Yeah, I, th I think so, yeah. And, you know, I... I I enjoy playing on my own, mm -hmm. but there certainly is a good thing about playing with other people too. And uh, you know, most people who start to play music start in high school or college, and you form friendships with friends, mm -hmm. and you enjoy the playing of music together. Yeah. And to me, there's a value in that. I mean, I'm 59. I think I'll be playing somehow, somewhere, some way, mm -hmm. till I'm, you know, 
whenever. <laughs> they say it's good for us. Yeah. Your own type of music therapy. Yeah. Where where are we going with this? We we had the the, the radio. We went to the the LPs to the yeah. to CDs. Now it's all digital. What is our future here with the? Well, you ask a good question. I think. Just, I think people will just kind of keep making music wherever they're at, doing whatever they're doing. Um, you know, you're always going to have like the Taylor Swifts and these, you know, the Beyonces, the the big folks who 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 make the big big splash. Mm -hmm. But there are thousands of people. It's kind of like Art Prize. At Art Prize, you see people who've been working on their little mm -hmm. thing, their yeah. little rhinoceros they've been building in their backyard right. for two years, and they bring it out and they say, "Boom! Here's my thing." And to a certain extent, they just had to do it. It wasn't like, I got to make this much money because I made this thing. Yeah. You do it because you love it. I think there will always be music and music making. I mean, yep. every mm -hmm. every Sunday in churches across the country, there are gospel groups and there are, you know, there are people making music and it's just, Doing it's just, love. yeah. Yep. yep. What's yeah. your family tradition on Christmas Day? Well, we will have a Christmas Eve service the night before. So we'll, so you had that we'll, wait, we'll have that on, right. on Wednesday right. night. Right. So Thursday morning we'll get up and we'll I'll either open up presents on Wednesday night or Thursday morning, yeah, and then we'll probably have turkey and then just lay yeah, around. Yeah, just lay around. And watch. And watch, watch us. Where do we find out more about you before we have you send us off with songs? Well, let's see. I have a website, glennboltheis.com. That's G-L-E-N-N-B-U-L-T-H-U-I-S. Mm -hmm. GlennBoltheis.com. But, um, yeah, and I, I'll play for all kinds of events. You know, bar mitzvah, slumber parties, you know. Sure. <laughs> play for us now. Take us out with a couple, two or three minutes of all a right. final song. Thanks for your time. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Make the yuletide bright. In a year, our troubles will be out of sight. From now on, have yourself a merry little Christmas. Make the Yuletide gay. From now on, our troubles will be miles away. Here we are, as in olden days, happy golden days of yore. Precious friends who are near to us Travel near to us once more I know that in a year We all will be together The fates allow Until then We'll just have to muddle through somehow have yourself a merry little Christmas now And everybody knows <laughs> Another one? Another one. Uh, <laughs> here we are as in olden days Happy golden days of yore Faithful friends who are near to us Travel near to us once more I know that in a year We all will be together If the fates allow Hang a shining star Upon the highest bough Have yourself a merry little Christmas now.
pada